almost like you're kind of skipping, <laughs> if that makes sense, which I guess in terms of the movie, it probably would look pretty silly and we're kind of glad that they didn't go down that route and they just said, you know what, he's just gonna walk around like normal and they're just gonna have to chalk it up to that. Hey launchers, welcome back to my YouTube channel here at The Launch Crew. It's another episode of The Launch Pad where we talk about anything and everything space related. Now, before we get started, I know quite a few of you have actually reached out and are saying, hey, where are these parodies and the sketches that you guys used to do? We miss those, we really wanna bring those back and don't worry, I haven't forgot about that. In fact, I love the parodies too and I really wanna get back into it. I'm going to talk a little bit about that towards the end of the video, so if you don't mind sticking around, I'm gonna kinda go over that. In my previous video, I actually touched on a subject that I'm actually gonna go into a little bit more detail this time around. It got me thinking a little bit in terms of this particular movie, and it's called The Martian. For those of you who guys haven't seen it, The Martian actually came out in 2015. It's actually based on the book by Andy Ware of the same title, and it's actually directed by Ridley Scott, and actually stars one of my favorite actors of all time, Matt Damon. Absolutely love this movie. It's actually up there pretty much in one of my top 10 movies that I usually recommend to family and friends or people that actually ask me. And if you're a big sci-fi fan like me, you watch quite a bit of these outer space movies and The Martian just really tops them all, along with Alien, but that's a whole nother subject. So I thought it'd be actually fun to kind of delve a little bit more into that movie and kind of explore some of the things that actually happened because when the movie was first released, it actually got some praise. Even within the scientific and NASA community, many people were saying that it's one of the most scientifically based accurate movies that have come out in a long time. I figured, you know what? Let's put that to the test and examine some of the things that happened and see whether or not that truly is accurate. Also, since this movie came out in 2015, I'm kind of debating on whether or not I should do like some sort of spoiler alert because it's been a couple of years. And honestly, if you actually haven't seen this movie yet, why not? Ain't nobody got time for that. Be sure to check out the movie if you haven't seen it already. It, like I said, it's amazing and I recommend that to everybody. A little bit of a background, Ridley Scott, the director, actually reached out to the NASA community to make sure that when he was actually making the movie, he wanted to make sure it was as scientifically accurate as possible within a movie guideline. You know, obviously you don't want it to be 100% accurate in the sense that it, it would just end up being a documentary, right? If, if it was that type of movie. Do as much as possible to make it as accurate as possible, but also you want to make it entertaining, so you don't want to bore people with the actual real life stuff that actually happens on space. But believe it or not, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction, as we always say, and sometimes some of the real life stuff is pretty crazy. So I do want to point out in the beginning of the movie, there is a rather large dust storm that kind of pushes the plot forward that actually ends up creating his predicament, Matt Damon's character's predicament, and being stranded on the particular planet and actually having the rest of his crew leave him behind because of that. Dust is blowing everywhere, it gets really, really dark, very, really fast. And the scientists say that technically, yes, we do have dust storms that we actually see on Mars and they can reach up to 100 miles per hour, but because the gravity is not as strong on the planet, the inertia and the push that you might get here on Earth is nowhere near the same on Mars. Will it have that same dramatic impact that you see in the movie? Most likely not. Even the <laughs> author said that, yes, he did make it a little bit more of a stronger dust storm. And that was just, like I said, to make sure the plot gets pushed forward and creates that predicament of having Matt's character kind of be stranded on their planet. Technically that's fiction. Okay, so let's talk about the space travel time duration that is mentioned in the movie. In The Martian, it's actually said that it takes about eight months to and from the planet from here on Earth. And scientifically speaking, it is approximately about the same. So the actual brutal reality of space travel is that most places, even to the moon, it takes a couple of weeks to months to actually get there depending on how fast you travel and to mars it's no different space travel if they try to make it as accurate as possible is kind of boring because oftentimes there are large stretches of space where you don't really do anything so they kind of speed it up you'll try to go to like a place like alpha centauri and would it would take you what like a year to get there is what they say so which is completely not accurate so i like the fact that the martian movie actually does look into the fact that it does take about eight months. So I would say that is fact. Next, we'll examine the idea that Matt Damon's character, of course, has to eat and the fact that he's now stranded and the fact that he's running out of supplies, he actually uses a combination of excrement, 
Martian soil and some sort of, I think, water that he has housed in there, if I'm not mistaken, to actually grow potatoes. Not much else, but it does help sustain him. So scientifically speaking, can you actually grow vegetables like potatoes in Martian soil? And believe it or not, a lot of NASA scientists are saying, yes, you can technically do that with the right amount of ingredients. So that part of the movie is fact. All right, so let's talk about the radiation that's depicted in the movie, the one that actually comes from our sun. That's pretty lethal if you don't have enough shielding, if you know what I mean. So in the movie, Matt's character walks around pretty much in just his spacesuit outside oftentimes when he's trying to basically grow the potatoes and things like that. Is that something that you can actually do on Mars? And scientists say that technically you can for a shorter period of time. Oftentimes you probably wanna be inside some sort of shelter and that shelter would actually be pretty much buried kind of underground or as close to inside of the actual soil of Mars to kind of provide a little bit more shielding, especially if you have a spacesuit that Matt's was wearing that seems pretty mobile. So it may not have the kind of material that's as thick as it need to be in order to move around. So whether or not that's technically accurate is kind of up for debate. In fact, if I remember, in the movie, Matt's character was actually stranded on Mars for at least a year or more, just walking around in a spacesuit. And if that were to be something that was accurate in real life, he would have greatly risked his exposure to probably developing cancer a little bit down the line. He may not necessarily have those immediate symptoms, but he greatly increased that risk by just basically being on the surface of the planet a lot. Overall, this is a tie. All right, so let's go over how the Ares crew, minus Matt's character, of course, how they actually were able to escape the actual gravity of Mars. Now, gravity of Mars is not as strong as I mentioned earlier. I believe in the book and even in the movie, the vehicle that they use is called a Mars Ascent Vehicle and it basically has a mechanism in which it actually takes methane from the atmosphere of Mars and converts it into some sort of energy that propels the actual craft out into orbit. And then once it reaches a certain velocity, it actually docks with the Hermes craft, which is out orbiting around Mars. Is that something that's feasible today? Scientists say at the moment, no, we really don't have a lot of data on how we can actually take off from Mars. I mean, we take off all the time from Earth and even that doesn't always work. I mean, there's hundreds of takeoffs per year, but some of them actually fail. I think at the moment right now, scientists are actually working on solving that particular issue. They're thinking of actually just leaving some samples on actual Mars and then actually in a couple of years, go back and grab those samples and then take off from the planet and try to return those samples back here on Earth. And hopefully by that point, we can actually apply what we learned from that to an actual human man mission. In this particular instance, I would have to say that is fiction. Here's another one. There are tornadoes depicted in the movie. And yes, there are tornadoes, or I guess you could say dust devils is what they call them on Mars. They're just another form of a dust storm that kind of swirls around that looks like a tornado. Because the gravity of Mars is not that strong, these dust devils don't really have that much of an impact, unlike you would actually see here on our planet. So if you go by how strong these tornadoes are being depicted in the movie, I would have to say overall, this is fiction. So now the second half of the movie, Matt Damon's character actually is able to finally communicate with Earth because when he was originally stranded, he had no way of letting Earth know that he was there. They had no idea what happened to him. They thought that maybe he had died. They weren't sure how to, how to get in touch with him. He actually treks from his habitat to a couple of rovers that actually were landed on Mars in 1997 and have actually stopped communicating because their batteries were dead. And he was able to kind of pilfer them and kind of repurpose them to create some sort of communication device and actually be able to communicate with NASA here on Earth, which worked, which helped them a lot. Now, is this something that someone can actually do in real life? Scientists say that yes, you can. Technically, the equipment is still good, and if you can figure out a way to bypass the batteries and be able to give it some juice, then it would still be able to communicate with Earth and things would be good. So overall, I would say this is Fact. So if you look at Matt's character as he walks around on Mars, it's very similar to how he would walk around here on Earth, which is not quite the same. And because Mars only has 30% of Earth's gravity, you walking around would look more like a kind of gate, kind of a, between, I'd say, a shuffle and a hop. Almost like you're kind of skipping. <laughs> 
<laughs> if that makes sense. Which I guess in terms of the movie, it probably would look pretty silly and we're kind of glad that they didn't go down that route and they just said, you know what, he's just gonna walk around like normal and they're just gonna have to chalk it up to that. It is fiction. <laughs> and lastly, well, let's talk about the habitat that his character is habitating. It's actually inflatable and it's pretty light and airy and it does have like the walls are pretty thin any kind of wind that it kind of hits the material you'll see it kind of move and sway and swing a little bit and for the most part that's what scientists would say is pretty accurate in terms of how the inflatable habitat would be created there on mars as we mentioned it would be even better if it could be slightly buried within the planet itself to kind of shield it from any kind of solar radiation but overall I would say this is a good win for it being a fact. So yeah, so is this movie scientifically accurate? I would say what, there was like five that we considered fact within the movie that we examined, three that were fiction, and then one, I guess you could say is more of a tie. So I would say, yeah, this is a pretty good movie for it being accurate. Yay, good for the Martian, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, there are other things we could have actually went over as well, and things such as like the life support system, the Hermes spacecraft, the, the aesthetics view of how Mars looked, all those things were scientifically accurate. And so that kind of really makes the movie feel as realistic as possible without it being, like I said, a documentary. All right, guys, so hopefully this was fun. Hope you guys learned a little bit of something, got a little bit of an education, and maybe for those of you who actually have not watched the movie, kind of got you excited to go and watch it. Shoot, you can probably watch it on Netflix or Hulu or one of those particular streaming platforms at the moment and really just learn a little bit more about how space exploration to Mars can and would be. So let's talk about something that some of you have actually been patiently waiting for and it's the sketches. In fact, I've been working on something that hopefully you guys will really enjoy and it'll be funny and it'll be entertaining. It's just, I'm trying to get the logistics done and I definitely want to make sure it's done right and that you guys really truly enjoy it when it finally comes out. But I can give you a little bit of a teaser as to what might be happening. It's a space helmet and I think we should try it on, don't you think? Yeah, I will be wearing this in the upcoming sketches, so hopefully you guys are excited. I know I am. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's gonna be happening in terms of a storyline that I'm actually creating. Yes, it is actually pretty confined in this helmet, and I got this off of Amazon, so I think it looks pretty good, right? I don't know, let me know what you think. There's gonna be a whole suit as well, so. Yeah, so that's all I have for you guys today. If you like this, go ahead and hit that like button. Comment below. Let me know if you guys have seen The Martian and what you guys thought of the movie. And for those who are new here, thank you for stopping by. Welcome. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. And I guess I will see you guys next time. This is Chani here at The Launch Crew, and I'm signing off.